So, hello. We got to see the gametogenesis in the last video, right? So, what are the take home points that I told you? Yes, you have to know about the duration of spermatogenesis, right? And where the secondary oocyte gets arrested, where the primary oocyte gets arrested, and what is the origin, right? So, it is from primordial germ cell. All the gametes arise from primordial germ cell, which is from the epiblast layer, they migrate to yolk sac and get to gonads and they go for further development, right? So these are the take home points from last class video. Uh, you need not worry, once the entire embryology is done with the points, right? All the notes that I have given will be sent as a PPT to your groups, right? So you can have this PPT, use this, study for your exams, go get good marks, right? Fine. So let us get to first week development. So in the first week development, what we are going to mainly discuss is on fertilization and implantation, a very short video, right? Again, you all know, right? So what did we see in the last video is, yes, first meiotic division is over. As a result, you'll be having the formation of secondary oocyte and first polar body. And this secondary oocyte will get into second meiotic division. It gets arrested at the metaphase. And it will wait for 24 hours, right? Within 24 hours, if the sperm is going to come and fuse into the secondary oocyte, second meiotic division is completed and then zygote is formed. So this is what is the story. So now what we are going to consider is the sperm is going to get into the ova within 24 hours, into the secondary oocyte within 24 hours. So following sexual intercourse, these sperms are going to be deposited along the cervix and the vagina before it gets to the oocyte, right? So where fertilization will happen, that's the very first point, I'm sorry. It happens at the ampulla. Very, very important, right? So it happens at the ampulla of the fallopian tube. So secondary oocyte will be waiting there. So the sperm, right, it has to come. So for sperm to you know, get into the ampulla, it is not that easy. Before it gets into ampulla, penetrates the oocyte, it has to undergo a process called capacitization. It has to undergo a process called capacitation. Yes. What is this capacitation? Is basically conditioning of the sperms. So I condition the sperm. No, it's basically an um, interaction of the epithelial cells of the sperm with the you no know, uterine cells and the sperm is getting conditioned and it reaches the ampulla. Now, once it reaches the ampulla, what happens? So the capacitated sperms will reach the ampulla where the oocyte is waiting. So this is the zona pellucida. So you'll be having corona radiata cells outside. So the capacitated sperms can easily penetrate the corona radiata and it can come and bind at the layer of zona pellucida. Now, for our NEET exams or for your university MCQs, they can ask the ligands that is responsible for sperm penetration. Very important for sperm penetration into zona pellucida. Main important ligand is called something ZP3, zona pellucida 3 ligand, right? So this is the ligand that will allow the sperm to bind as well as penetrate the zona pellucida layer. So we'll see what happens. Now, you all know a sperm contains on its top, you have something called as acrosome, right? Now, what happens following capacitation, the sperm is going to penetrate the corona radiata and come in contact with the zona pellucida, a sperm binding. Once it comes in contact with the zona pellucida, the acrosome of the sperm releases certain enzymes. So that is called acrosomal reaction. So the first event that happens with sperm is capacitation. The second event that happens with the sperm is the acrosomal reaction. So as a result of acrosomal reaction, yes, the sperm penetrates the ova, I mean the zona pellucida, and it comes, very important word, it comes in contact, as yes, it comes in contact with the plasma membrane as yes, it comes in contact with the plasma membrane of the oocyte. It is not going to penetrate the plasma membrane. I guess you understand the difference between penetration and contact. 
the sperm once it penetrates the zona pellucida as a result of acrosomal reaction will just come in contact with the plasma membrane of the oocyte which means it is just going to touch the plasma membrane so if you take this is the perivitelline space that is the space between the plasma membrane of the oocyte and the zona pellucida so it will cross the perivitelline space and come in contact with the plasma membrane of the oocyte so if you take underneath the plasma membrane can you appreciate some laddu structures as these laddus are called as cortical granules yes you have got some granules along the lining of plasma membrane of the oocyte yes the moment the gamete i mean the sperm touches the plasma membrane of the oocyte these cortical granules get activated and the next event that happens is the next thing that happens is cortical reaction is what happens is cortical reaction so cortical reaction is the release of the contents of the cortical granules from the oocyte what is the stimulus as a result of contact of sperm with the plasma membrane of the oocyte so three reactions first one capacitation second one acrosomal reaction third one cortical reaction so this cortical reaction will allow the sperm yes will allow the sperm to enter into the oocyte now right so after this the sperm will enter now the moment the sperm penetrates as yes, moment the sperm penetrates the oocyte what happens is meiosis 2 is completed yes as a result of completion of meiosis 2 the secondary oocyte is reduced to a structure called as ova or that i call it as female pro nucleus right so the sperm enters after the cortical reaction the sperm enters into the cytoplasm and the meiosis 2 is completed the female pro nucleus is formed as a result of meiosis 2 so again meiosis 2 is an unequal division you will have formation of ova and the second polar body yes i have already told in oogenesis right now this female pro nucleus so simultaneously what will happen is the sperm nucleus will also get matured and forms sperm pro nucleus what it will form is male pro nucleus so as a result of formation of both the pro nucleus what happens is the female pro nucleus which is formed as a result of meiosis 2 fuses with the male pro nucleus and it leads on to the formation of zygote as it leads on to the formation of zygote and formation of zygote is called fertilization right so capacitation acrosomal reaction cortical reaction sperm penetrates the cytoplasm meiosis 2 complete meiosis 2 of secondary oocyte is completed so i get female pro nucleus and a second tiny polar body at the same time the sperm is going to give rise to the male pro nucleus both of these pro nucleus are going to fuse to form what is called as zygote this ends fertilization now once the zygote is formed why i included this point in the next under cleavage is because once zygote is formed it undergoes certain series of continuous mitotic divisions as it undergoes a series of mitotic divisions that i call it as cleavage yes now initially if you take the zygote initially if you take so let me write this mitotic division point adjacent to this cleavage is basically successive series of mitotic divisions of the zygote right so initially if we take this is the let us assume this is the female pro nucleus this is the male pro nucleus these are fused to form the zygote this is a two cell stage then what happens is it undergoes continuous mitotic division so it undergoes three mitotic divisions three mitotic divisions to form four cell stage then i get eight cell stage right here eight cell stage is missing let me tell you what happens now if you take as yes, the cells continuously they multiply so i get increase in number of cells so this eight cell stage if you take till this eight cell stage all the cells are loosely arranged what happens is yes. all the cells are loosely arranged now after the eighth cell stage the no cell recognizes oh i am very loosely arranged so what happens it undergoes 
tightness. So there are some tight gap junctions that are formed and that process is called compaction. So once the eight cell stage is formed, all the loosely arranged cells are going to undergo a process called compaction. And as a result of compaction, the cells become very tightly at their end. Now this eight cell stage that is being compacted undergoes another mitotic division to form 16 cell the stage that is called morula. Yes, that is called morula. Now, let me show you a picture, yes. So if you take oocyte is formed, fertilization, I told you it happens within 12 to 24 hours, right? Then this fertilized zygote, as yes, it goes, it undergoes cleavage and approximately by three days from the date of fertilization, morula is formed. Again, an important MCQ. So morula is formed approximately three days from the fertilization, from the time of fertilization. Now, if you take, now what happens? This morula, when you take this, it happens in the ampulla, then slowly it moves towards the uterine cavity. This 16 cell stage morula is it is going to enter into the uterus. Yes, it enters into the uterus, but before it enters into the uterus, it undergoes one more division. Yes, it undergoes one more division to form a 32 celled stage called as advanced morula stage. Yes, so the zygote, if it has to be implanted, what, what should happen? It should undergo it should undergo cleavage and form 32 celled advanced morula stage. So this advanced morula stage, what happens is it is going to enter into my uterine cavity. Now, once it enters into uterine cavity, what happens is, yes, the uterine fluid, the uterine fluid will start invaginating, yes, it will start entering into this advanced morula stage. What happens? The uterine fluid, yes, the uterine fluid, enters into this morula stage and it forms a cavity like how we saw antrum with respect to oogenesis it again forms a fluid filled cavity here that i call it as blastocele that i call it as blastocele yes this is the cavity which is filled with the fluid called as blastocele so if you remember in oogenesis, we saw all the follicles as the you know, fluid keeps increasing, it got arranged into two layers. Similarly, what happens is all the blastomeres, blastomeres are basically the cells that make up the zygote, right? So all these cells are called blastomeres. So these blastomeres, they get arranged into two layers called as the inner cell mass and the outer cell mass. This outer cell mass is what is called as trophoblast. Yes, that is what is called as trophoblast. This trophoblast will help in implantation, right? So if you take all these cells get arranged into two layers, an outer layer that is called as the outer cell mass, that is also called as the trophoblast, and it gets arranged into another inner layer called as the inner cell mass, that is called as the embryoblast. Yes, that is called as the embryoblast. So what happens with these layers? So if you take embryoblast, which means this embryoblast is going to give rise to, yes, it gives rise to embryo proper. So whatever structures that we are going to appreciate is a result from what? The inner cell mass, that is the embryo proper, right? And if you take the outer cell mass, which is actually called as the trophoblast, which will develop future placenta. So initially it helps in implantation, it gets added to the uterine wall and gives rise to future placenta. Maybe an MCQ question, fate of trophoblast, fate of embryoblast. So if you take this picture, this is the advanced morula stage. It slowly enters into the uterine cavity. And can you appreciate this is the blastocyst that is formed. So this is the inner cell mass. This is the trophoblast. And finally, it gets implanted. So if you take at the third day, morula is formed. At the fourth day, if you take the morula, that is the advanced morula stage, enters into uterine cavity. Yes, at the fourth day, it enters into the uterine cavity and approximately the fifth day, it forms blastocyst. Yes, it forms blastocyst. And approximately sixth to seventh day, five and a half to seven days, it gets implanted. Yes, it gets implanted. So first week, we seven days, right? So in the seventh day, 
first day fertilization then after 3 days i get morula fourth day i get advanced morula stage and that advanced morula stage enters into uterine cavity fifth day blastocyst formation and from there in one or two days the blastocyst it gets implanted in the endometrial wall right and that completes my first week development right i hope i made it very simple very clear right all these we have learned in 12th class right so what you have to know is this fertilization events can be a very important short note starts with capacitation acrosomal reaction cortical reaction then you have got cleavage two cell four cell eight cell compaction 16 cell that is morula stage then what happens morula becomes advanced morula so it enters into uterine cavity where the uterine fluid is going to invaginate into the advanced morula and i get outer cell mass and an inner cell mass inner cell mass embryoblast gives rise to embryo proper the outer cell mass that is eutrophoblast gives rise to placenta and i got a fluid called as blastocoel implantation up, act, uh, no happens approximately 5 and up to 6 or even 7 days right so this is the first week development right so i hope i made myself clear see you in another video thank you all bye